Welcome to a new episode in my personal website redesign series. This is a series that's been going on since 2018. And honestly, I feel like it's probably never gonna be finished because I feel like my personal website is never finished. But that's also kind of what I love about designing for the web is that we always get a chance to iterate and improve on our designs. And that's exactly what I wanna do in today's video. I'm gonna take a page on my site, this page here to be exact, which is a page that I designed to sell copies of my font, Grayscale. We're gonna look at the conversion rate. We're gonna analyze the page performance and see where we can make some improvements to it. To help with this, I'm gonna be using Hotjar, who are the sponsor of today's video, to look at some heat maps and get an idea of my user behavior on the site. It's gonna be fun. So let's get into it. First, let's take a look at some numbers to get the lay of the land here. So in the last month, this page has had about 1,000 unique visits, which is pretty good, but I have only sold nine copies of my font through it, which is definitely not good. There's a lot of room for improvement here. That's a conversion rate of like less than 1%. So there's plenty that needs to be worked on, but looking at conversion rate data like this, while it's great for figuring out where a problem is, like looking at the pages on a site that are underperforming, the ones that are like, um, not converting at a rate compared to others. It's great for figuring out where you should be putting your attention, where the opportunity is, but it doesn't really tell me what is going wrong on this page, right? It doesn't tell me what I need to fix. That is where things like heat maps, like recordings of people using your site really come in handy. They give you a much clearer idea of how people are actually interacting with it and, and what's really going on. So I wanna take a look at some of the data that I have in Hotjar about this page's performance. You can see here, I've generated a heat map of my font sales page. And if you haven't heard of Hotjar before, it's a tool that you add to your site just like you would any other analytics tool like Google Analytics, for example, but it gives you a way to analyze your user's behavior visually. I find it gives an extra layer of understanding that as a visual person being a designer, I just don't get from looking purely at the, the numbers, the data itself. Um, and at the company I work for, ConvertKit, we use it on our marketing site. It's been super useful. And I don't know why I never considered using it on my personal site until now, because it's been fascinating to look at these heat maps. Hopefully it's pretty clear from looking at this, in, I'm in the, the click heat map right now, that you can see all the spaces that people have clicked when they're on my site. The more clicks, the like, you know, brighter the color. You can see where their mouse moved around on the site as well, where they scrolled to, super interesting. Looking at my scroll data, actually, this is really, Encouraging, I guess, to see that 75-ish percent of people on the page actually scrolled to reach the, the buy now button. That was my first concern when I saw how low the conversion rate was of my page. I was like, okay, well, maybe people aren't even making it to the buy now button. You know, I've got quite a big header at the top here. So that's encouraging. That tells me that that's probably not the problem, at least on desktop. Let's go back to clicks. So there's a lot of people clicking on the menu, which makes sense. I can see some people here clicking on the name of the font itself. This isn't actually clickable. And maybe they're trying to highlight the text, which won't work because it's actually an image. So maybe that's something I need to change. I need to get the web font actually on my site to better promote it. I can see people clicking on these images here, which is good because they are like a light box when you click on them. If I go over to the actual page and show you, it um, opens up the image large so you can see it clearer. So that's good. That's working as intended. What else? I can see people are flicking back and forth between standard and extended. So they're checking out the difference in price between my two licensing options. What I also see that's interesting though, is people clicking on the standard license or for personal use. Maybe they're trying to get an idea of what that includes and that's not actually clickable. So maybe I should make it clickable up there so that I'm giving them that information. What about mobile? Let's see what's happening on the mobile version of this page. So again, we have a lot of clicks on the menu and a lot more on the buy now button, it says. So what this buy now button does is actually scrolls you down to this point here where you're picking your license. I wanna see the scroll data here. Interesting. Okay, so unlike on desktop where 75% of people were making it to the buy now button, we've got only about 48% of people are getting there on mobile. So that is an opportunity that tells me that maybe I need to bring this button further up the top somehow so that that more people actually reach that point on the page. Going back to the tap view, this is interesting. People are clicking on this little flag. I don't know what to call this. It's a little note that I made to say like, this is a bonus item, but 
clearly because of the way that I've designed it, it looks like a button and people are clicking on it. So maybe I need to change that so that it's not like a bad user experience for people. Again, we have a lot of clicks back and forth on the standard and extended license, but yeah, this bit up here with so many people clicking on the buy now button tells me that maybe that's the thing I need to fix. Maybe I need to just literally allow people to click to buy the font right away at the top of the page. I mean, if they're interested in it, why put an extra step in there, you know, um, like I have right now. Let me just show you that in action so you know what I'm talking about there. See, you click it and it brings you down to this section. If people are ready to buy and they want to click that buy now, then I should just allow them to do that, right? <laughs> okay, so that's already given me some ideas. Now let's check out the recordings. And I only want to see recordings. I'm going to go to visited URL where someone has visited the shop page. This is a part of like analyzing your website performance that gets really cool because you can actually see what people are clicking on and how they're navigating around your site. A few things to note here. One is that uh, with these recordings, all the data is anonymized. So it's not connected to someone's email address or you know any other personal data on my site. And then the other thing is that any numbers and personally identifiable information is start out. That's why you saw there that the price um, has an asterisk instead of the actual number. I'm going to go through and watch a few of these and see what I can learn from it. So let me go back to my list. Probably won't watch all 221, but we'll go through a couple and I'll pull out some trends to tell you about. Okay, I've watched a bunch of recordings. Man, it's always so fascinating to see people interact with a site you've designed. A couple of things I want to point out about watching the recordings is, as you can see down the bottom here, it marks when there's some sort of activity, like a click or a scroll on the page. So I don't have to watch all this bit here with blank where there's nothing happening. I can just jump ahead to this point where they start scrolling. And I'm also watching things on 2x speed, so it makes it much faster as well. Uh, as you can see, we've got like the little movement of where their mouse is going on the page. So it's kind of like seeing the, that heat map data bit in real time. A couple of main things I noticed people were doing on this page. One was a lot of people would go to the about page next. So that makes me think maybe I need to add like a little thing about myself onto this page, um, like about the font designer or something, I don't know, to give people that information right here to avoid them leaving the page and then like, you know, forgetting to come back. I saw a lot of people sort of like idly scroll down and then back up again, sort of like doing this action. That makes me think there was nothing that really like hooked them. It made me realize that I don't really have a strong like selling point on this page, right? It's just sort of like telling you about the font. So I think that I could do better there with some sort of like a hook. I also think that I could put this licensing information, which right now opens in a separate tab. That might be better served if it opened in a modal on the page itself. I think honestly, I had it on a separate page um, because it was easier for me to build <laughs> at the time. So yep, that's my fault. Lesson learned. I should probably put that in a modal to keep people here on the sales page. I also noticed people on this page, like several people, opening the menu and clicking store and then sort of like clicking store again when they ended up back on this page. And that made me realize that that's bad UX because I don't have a full store yet. I had this in my menu intending on having more products, but right now it's just my font. So I should probably be clearer about that in the menu so that people aren't sort of like, you know, clicking, trying to get to a page and not realizing, no, no, this is the store, <laughs> you're on it. <laughs> But yeah, super interesting to see and interesting to see how little time people spend on the page as well. Like I said, a lot of people do a quick scroll. So I really need to like hook their attention a lot better than I am doing now for sure. All right, I think I have my plan of what I want to iterate on now. So now let's jump over into Webflow and I'm gonna make some changes and I'll explain what I'm changing as I go about doing it. Right, the first thing I wanna change, I think I mentioned before is this buy now button in the header. Instead, I'm gonna have two buttons, purchase standard license, $12 purchase extended license, $26 uh, in the header. So people can like jump straight in and buy immediately if that's what they're interested in. Okay, so we've got that up there now and this will link to just directly buying each license type. The next bit that I wanna tackle is specifically on mobile. Remember how only 48% of people were reaching 
this buy now button on mobile. Obviously part of this might be fixed by having the buttons in the header space now, but I do want to make this a little bit easier to scroll through. So what my plan is, is instead of having this, this is like a tab system down here, see where you swap between standard and extended. Instead of having it all the way down here, I'm sort of going to combine with this stuff. So you'll click standard and then you'll see the information, then you'll click extended and you'll see the extended license information. So it just brings that interactive element up higher. That's the goal anyways, is to see how that helps. We'll, we'll see. I think it'll be better on mobile to click between. So let's try that. Okay, so what I've done here is that everything looks the same on desktop and on tablet too actually, but on mobile I've done a hide show thing. So I've, I've hidden these top blocks and instead on mobile we display that sort of card within this tab system. So we see standard and extended and we can swap between there instead. So people can compare by tapping back and forth, which I think would be a good experience uh, and they can buy right from in here. Next up, the other thing I said I wanted to tackle was putting the licensing information in a modal so that we keep people on the page. So let's do that. <laughs> Okay, that was difficult, um, but I think I've got it in place. Let's go into view mode and see. So now when you click on see licensing information, it just shows up here right on the page so that you can view it in line rather than having to go off to a separate tab to see it. So I think that that's going to be better. Let's add in a learn more link in here as well. It will also open up. And then we'll do it over here as well. Just because remember there was people clicking on these areas looking to yeah learn more so we might as well make that an option for them cool and then the last big change that i want to make is leading rather than with the name of the font with like a hook like a reason why you would use it and the main way that i've seen people using my font has been to annotate designs so I'm going to try and make a different header section now that I think will help to explain the value of the font better. Let's try. Okay, so this change ended up changing the look of my header section a lot, obviously. There's a couple of things I've done here. One is add in my font as a web font. So now when people are clicking on this area, they're actually able to like highlight the text and see that yes, this is a real font really in use. I've gone with this annotate your designs with as a sort of pre header so that it's telling you like what a use case could be for the product. And then obviously I've got this image in here, which sort of shows some annotations, sort of like how you could use the design. I also changed up some of the copy here because I think one of the benefits of it is that it's really legible, but it still looks handwritten. You know, a lot of handwriting fonts are like 
I don't know, hard to read. This one is still really legible, but definitely still looks handwritten. And then on mobile, I swapped out the image for a mobile image so that, yeah, you're seeing um, an example more in keeping with the platform that you're on. Still not totally sure about these buttons on mobile, but we're gonna, we're gonna test this. We're gonna ship this and see what happens. I really did love the blue and purple header that I used to have. So I think I might continue to work on this um, over time and find a way to get the design on there as well as the image but I didn't want it to be too like overwhelming and I thought you know clearly the old page with its less than 1% conversion rate was not working properly so it might be time for a drastic change like this you know we're gonna test it out and see let's hit publish right now and get this thing out in the wild I'm really looking forward to checking in on this in a few weeks in Hotjar and seeing if I notice any changes in the heat maps and the recordings of uh, what people are doing see if I've fixed those issues Obviously hoping more font sales come through as well. Something else I might turn on in Hotjar, they have this survey option. Let me just show you what this is doing. Um, so basically it's a little pop-up that'll come, you know, just like this at the bottom of the page. And I've set it to ask this question. Is there anything holding you back from purchasing Grayscale? It'll give people a chance to tell me like, oh, I wish that I could see this or whatever. And I've have it set to only show on the shop page and to only show when a user is about to abandon the page. So it's not gonna interrupt them. Um, it's just gonna show up. If they're about to leave, this will like catch them hopefully and give them a chance to give me some feedback. So yeah, we can turn that on and see how it goes. I hope you found this interesting, not only to see what changes I make to a page to try and improve the conversion rate, but also to see how I've been investigating it all using Hotjar. Maybe it got you interested to try it out for yourself. Hotjar has a bunch of plans. There's a business one that I believe we're on at ConvertKit that's gonna be perfect for if you got ideas for from this for things you'd like to change on a site that you work on for your job. But they also have this personal plan. The basic one is free, which is great because it means you can install it on your personal website. You could investigate the user behavior happening there. Maybe if you sell a product like I do or a service, it can help you improve the conversion rate. Or maybe if you're just applying for jobs that you wanna check on the user experience of your portfolio, that could be interesting too. You should try it out. It's super easy to get set up. And like I said, if you work for a company, I hope that this gave you some ideas of how useful all this data could be to help you improve your work. So yeah, huge thank you to Hotjar for sponsoring this video. Looking forward to seeing how this page performs and um, what comes of these changes that I've made. And if you're interested in hearing more about that, please subscribe. I'll likely report back in a future vlog or a future video about it. Coming up next in this website redesign series, I think I'm gonna explore Webflow interactions more. You saw me play a little bit with them today for making that modal, but um, I've been exploring them a lot recently for a site I've been working on for my job and it's made me want to involve a lot more on my personal site. So stay tuned, we'll play with that in a future episode. Thanks for being here, thanks for watching, have a good week and I'll see you next time. Bye!